Good morning. Thank you for joining me for my daily Come Follow Me study of the Book of Mormon. Today is Thursday the 19th. Is that correct? Yes, Thursday the 19th. And we're going to start with a prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day. We are grateful for the rest that we just received. We're thankful for this opportunity to come before thee in scripture study and prayer. To learn thy ways and to um, incorporate them into our lives. Please bless that we will have a humble and teachable heart that we can learn the lessons that you're trying to teach us to turn us into the people that we need to be to become like thee. We love thee, Father, so very much, and we say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Uh, daily reflection. I almost forgot that. Okay. The 19th. It is requisite with the justice of God that men should be judged according to their works. And if their works were good in this life, and the desires of their hearts were good, that they should also, at the last day, be restored unto that which is good. Alma chapter 41, verse 3. How perfect the wisdom and mercy of our God. Both heart and hand will be weighed in the balance on judgment day. This divine combination reveals our true character better than either works or desires alone. We will each account for what we did in the circumstances that were ours as well as for what we would have done if we had been allowed control over those circumstances. There will be those who would have done more if they could, and those who could have done more than they did. The Lord knows what went into shaping who we are. He also knows our capabilities and our potential. How reassuring that He knows all things how reassuring that he who knows all things knows each of us individually. He sees our works. He knows our hearts. Thanks be to God that we will be judged not alone for our deeds, but also according to the desires of our hearts. And that's why they tell you to have a broken heart and a contrite spirit. Because if you do good and then you still are a bad person on the inside doesn't do you much good. Okay. And today is 3rd Nephi chapter 4. Yes. It's the 19th. Yeah. Okay. 3rd Nephi chapter 4. Um, in this, the Nephites defeat the Gadianton robbers. Gideonhi, the Gadianton leader, is slain and his successor is hanged. The Nephites praise the Lord for their victories. So, um, one part that stood out to me in this reading today was the part, so they've, the Nephites have gathered into Zarahemla, everything just in this little, little thing. That's where they all are, just in there. And then everything else is desolate. They didn't leave anything there. Um, anything they did leave has now been, you know, left desolate. And the Gadianton robbers are starving. They, they, they can only hunt beasts in the wilderness and they're too lazy to do that. So instead of going out and hunting and planting and taking care of themselves, they decide to attack the Nephites. And they attack, they attack, they attack. Um, and they're just, they're dying. They're dying from starvation. They're dying from battle. They're not making it, okay? So what they decided was they're going to surround the Nephites. So the Nephites are already in the city with all their provisions and everything they need to survive for seven years. And the Gadianton robbers just like hang around them and think they all cut them off from their supply or something. Or I don't know what they're thinking. Didn't make. Anyways, but... They're like, this is what we'll do. We'll just cut them off from everything. We'll just cut them off from everything. And because we've done that, 
they'll they'll be desperate for something and and we'll we'll win or we'll get what we need or they'll surrender or something i don't know what they were thinking but it was pretty dumb but what it reminded me of is kind of the covid situation about cutting everybody off from everybody else cutting you off from your job from uh your grocery stores from your friends your family from school from church just cut everybody off and they'll be more submissive cut everybody off and we'll win and it kind of worked but in this situation it didn't because these people were prepared now the verse I chose for my teachable verse is verse 33 and their hearts were swallowed with joy unto the gushing out of many tears because of the great goodness of God in delivering them out of the hands of their enemies and they knew it was because of their repentance and their humility that they had been delivered from the ever from an everlasting destruction. And my little statement here is that they became humble and repentant and thus they knew where their deliverance came from. They they were teachable in that before they were like, oh, in past chapters, look at me and my strength. Thus, they were left to their own strength, but here they knew where it came from. They had become humble and repentant and thus teachable, and they knew where to give thanks. So that's my verse for today. Let's get into the commentary. My shoulder's feeling a little bit better today. As you can see, I'm using it, but it, I can feel it in tender, mo in tender moments. Um, the Nephites did not fear them, but they did fear their God. The contrast in perspective is dramatic. The Gadian armies interpret the homage and reverence. Oh yeah. When they come against them to battle um, and the Nephites see the Gadianton army, they fall down to the ground and they begin to pray to the Lord for deliverance. And the Gadianton robbers are like, yeah, they fear us. Woohoo. We're BA. But really they were just hoping for deliverance. Okay. The Gadianton armies interpret the homage and reverence of the Nephites as a gesture of desperation. On the other hand, the Nephites discount the physical peril that is descending upon them and instead place their trust in the Lord. Um, let's read a memory. A number of years ago, I was privileged to serve in a branch presidency at the Missionary Training Center in Provo. One day in our discussions with the young missionaries, the subject of fear of the Lord came up and the young elders and sisters were eager to understand this principle. What does it mean to fear the Lord? What blessings does the Lord give to those who fear him? To prepare, for, to prepare a lesson for them, I searched the scriptures and learned that the expression fear of the Lord occurs no fewer than 202 times in the scriptures. With a wide range of closely interrelated meanings, um, to get a sense of the core essence of the expression, I did a frequency analysis with the following results. In each case with a predominate, predominant meaning, the number of occurrences and a representative reference. Serve him 17 times, as in Joshua 24, 14. Keep his commandments 13 times, as in Ecclesiastes 12.13. Worship him seven times, like in 2 Kings 17.36. I'm just going to read the, t the times. I'm not going to read the scriptures anymore. Praise him six times. Trust him six times. Heed and do his words six. Sanctify him four. Keep his statutes three. Give glory to him three. Walk in his ways three. Judge righteously to obey his voice to consider his works to know his mighty arm to bear testimony to cleave to him to and several additional usages including pain tithing rejoicing being united and so forth certainly the predominant meaning of fear the lord is to serve him with full obedience and to worship him in a spirit of devotion praise and trust the second task was to understand clearly which blessings the Lord reserves for those who fear him. In these ways, the scriptures again were explicit. 
Here are the highlights of the frequency analysis, which point out what is in store for those who serve and obey the Lord in fear. Wisdom, 12 times mentioned in the scriptures. Knowledge, 9. Salvation, 5. Strength, 3. Life, 3. Having no wants, 2. Plus, plus a host of other blessings mentioned once or twice, including access to the mysteries and covenants of God, mercy, eternal glory, preservation, enduring forever, ministering of angels, shield of protection, and comfort of the Holy Ghost. What a grand principle it is to fear the Lord, to serve Him, obey Him, worship Him, and trust Him will bring us wisdom, knowledge, salvation, strength, life, and a myriad other choice and glorious benefits. It is an eternal bargain. The results of this scripture, scriptural analysis I placed on two little bookmarks as a gift for the missionaries in the hope that they would use them to mark important places in their scriptures and ponder prayerfully the grand essence of the commandment to fear the Lord. Even more important would be for us all to mark a place in our hearts and minds as a commitment to remember this principle in all that we do. Okay, and that was a, a little choppy for me to understand what he was saying there, but I'm getting the essence mainly because I had to skip over so many scriptural references. Um, when I do that, I get slightly confused, but anyways, um, I, when people say God fearing women, I'm like, why would you fear God? Why? I don't understand why fearing God is a good thing. I don't fear God. I want to meet him, but, um, maybe fear isn't the right word. Maybe it's to represent how we should not be afraid, but we should be conscious that when we stand before him, he's going to know our deeds. Maybe that's the concept. Okay. May the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob protect his people in righteousness. The people rejoice in the great victory granted them by the Lord. Renewed in their covenant commitments, they give thanks unto the Lord for deliverance. As we shall see, the imprisoned Gadianton robbers are taught the gospel. Those prisoners who believe and forsake their sins and evil desires by covenant are liberated. The rest are punished under the law. Hosanna to the Most High God. The people are overcome with feelings of gratitude and thanksgiving. What a contrast to the prevailing attitudes prior to the great events attending the successful campaign of Laconius and Gidgidoni, when pride and indifference to the things of God were dominant. We can partake of more of the goodness and mercy of God as we repent and serve him in humility. The Nephites, because of their wickedness, were sorely afflicted by the Gadianton robbers, but were finally delivered out of the hands of their enemies. Their hearts were filled with joy because of the goodness of God, in preserving them, they knew it was because they had repented and had become stronger in their humility. Oh. Okay. I think that's all my thoughts on that. Okay. Our daily prayer or reading on prayer. 263. Ardith G. Cap. Humble supplication. It is often in the valleys with our afflictions that we are truly humbled and better prepared to remember the gift of eternal life for which he paid the price. Those times when we feel least worthy, least comfortable about carrying his holy name and have a keener sense of our imperfections. Those moments when the flesh is weak and our spirits suffer disappointment for our errors and our sins. We might feel a sense of withdrawal, a pulling away, a feeling of needing to set aside a time at least 
for that divine relationship with the Savior until we are more worthy. But at that very moment, even in our unworthiness, the offer is again given to us to accept the great gift of the atonement. Even before we change, when we feel we need to pull away, let us reach out to him. Instead of feeling the need to resist, let us submit to his will. Let us bend our will as well as our knees in humble supplication. Okay. Wow, that one hurt. Okay. I had a thought. As I was waking up this morning, I was thinking about work, as is so often the case. And I'm training two people at the same time. And they, ha <clears throat> they have job coaches because they're special needs. And I'm running low on patience with one of them. Because every time... I teach them something, they act like it's the first time I'm teaching them something. But it's not the first time I'm teaching them something. This is the second week they've worked at our store. And every single time, they act like it's the first time they're seeing this. And I'm getting frustrated because I know that just five minutes ago we went over this. And... It, I'm like, okay, now you do this. And they'll be like, what? And I'll be like, print, hit print. We're here to print this email. So what's the next step? Print. We would hit print. I don't, we just did this five minutes ago. Hit print. What? I, I don't understand how they don't understand, but they do have a learning disability, which, but as I was waking up this morning, I was comparing it to how Heavenly Father tries to teach me. Am I like that when he's teaching me, when he's giving me instruction, am I saying, what, what, what is, I've never seen this before. And he's like, oh my goodness, we went over this last month. I showed you this last month. Why, why aren't you getting this? Like, is that how he's teaching me? Is that how I'm responding to his teaching? So I'm going to come up with a, a different way to try to teach them how to do this these things at work because they are not getting it at all. And I, like, I feel bad when I get frustrated with them because they have a learning disability. They're trying, although it, it feels or seems like they're not trying. I know that they are and I just get frustrated. And I'm, I just, this morning when I was waking up, I was like, is that how he feels about me when he's teaching me? What can I do better to be more teachable? And then also, what can I do to help her be more teachable? Anyways. All right. Let's end it with a read it, do it. It is the 19th. Third Nephi chapter 4, verses 31 through 33. Their, troubled, their troubles aren't over, but the Nephites pause to rejoice in the midst of them because they have seen the great goodness of God. They sing, they praise, they gush out many tears and cry Hosanna. Their hearts swell with joy. Rejoice. All right. That was 3rd Nephi chapter 4, and tomorrow we do chapter 5. Let's end it off with a prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this day. We're grateful for the messages that were shared today that you shared with me. And please, I ask that thou would please bless me with a teachable and patient heart that I can 
help those who I am trying to teach that they can learn how they need to learn and I can be patient with them. Please bless me with charity. Please help me get through this week. And please help those who are watching. Bless them with whatever they need at this time. Please bless those who are suffering, who have lost loved ones, who are missing family and friends. And please be with the missionaries, be with Hannah. Bless them, strengthen them. And please bless us all with thy guiding hand this day that we can do the things that that would have us do. I love thee, Father, so very much. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Oh, I got a pain. That was... That was weird. All right. I love you all. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Oh, I don't know if I can move.